Hello everybody. In today's lesson we are going to talk about high quality graphing and what that means is producing a graph by hand that has all of the bells and whistles. I have here also with me a graphing calculator which you'll be using quite often. Um, these will produce graphs for you but there are all these weird things about the graphs. First they miss a lot of the details and they're very pixelated and the screen is strange and if you don't set the window just right, the graph shape gets all distorted. So this is something that's really good for when we want to graph a bunch of things quickly. But if I want to make sure that you know how to graph and you know what a good graph has, then you need to follow these criteria here called high quality graphing. Now you don't have to copy these criteria down. As you see it says here, it's a notebook insert. So you are going to get a copy of this to keep in your notebook and a note that this is also pasted or actually glued to the wall of my classroom. So if you look over where the graphing calculators are, you'll see a bunch of uh, colored papers and those colored papers will have these criteria on them. Okay, so first things first, graphs are pictures of data, right? Patterns, shapes, trends are visible in a graph and when you make a high quality graph, those patterns, those shapes, those trends have to be clearly visible. Because here's the deal, kids, you can take any graph and if you zoom in on it enough, it'll look like a line segment. You can take a circle and zoom in on it enough on that calculator and it's going to look like a line circle or a line segment. But that doesn't, that's not a high quality graph because the shape of it was a circle, right? So you have to make sure that your graph shows all of the features that the graph has. Like if it changes direction someplace, it's in your graph, right? Now here's something very important. You have to use an appropriate scale for the data and the size of the grid. Now, you don't have to actually use an entire sheet of graph paper for one graph. Actually, I discourage you from doing that because it's, there's no point unless you are actually physically going to be working with the graph. Now, if you graph data points like we do later on to figure out trends in the data, then yes, you want a big graph to work with. But if we're just looking for the shape and the patterns that emerge from the graph, you can make a graph like this big as I'm about to show you has to be on graph paper and don't try to cheat and like draw in some like horizontal and vertical lines on a piece of paper or get lined paper and make vertical lines on it. It needs to be on proper graph paper. All right. And we have plenty of graph paper in class, so you don't have to make your own. I know a lot of people when you're first start graphing, you automatically put the origin in the center of the grid. And that's actually not the best way to do things because you want to see the best picture of the graph and sometimes that means you have to take the origin and move it around. So if your graph is entirely in the first two quadrants, the above the x-axis, then who cares about what's below the uh, below the x-axis? You don't need to put the origin in the center. Sometimes you might need to drag it down to see the shape of the graph. Now here's a big one that people mess up all the time. You need to connect the data points with a correct line or curve. It's not both, okay? Now here's the deal. If data points line up in a straight line, then of course I want you to use a ruler, connect the dots. But if your data points line up in a curve, then you do not connect those points with straight line segments. You have to follow the curve of the data points because by drawing straight line segments around there, you are saying something about the data that is not true. So when points are curvy, they need to be connected with a curve. If points line up in a straight line, they need to be connected with the straight line. Which brings us to the next thing. You gotta use a straight edge or ruler for lines. Okay, don't hand draw a line, don't hand draw your axes. Okay, they end up all wonky and wavy and that is not high quality. Here's another big one. Use arrows for anything that goes forever. Your axes go forever, so you gotta use arrows. Now, not all graphs go on forever. There are actually some graphs that kind of start at a point and then go on forever, or some graphs that are like start at one point and end at another point. And they don't have arrows because they have distinct start and stop points. And if you want to see an example of those graphs, you can look at the Algebra 2 investigating a function posters that I have up around the room, and you could see there's some special graphs there that don't go on forever. Now here's something big. Label your axes. And when I mean label your axes, I mean put an X and put a Y there. This is especially critical for scatter plots, meaning graphs of data. So if I'm like doing an experiment and my x-axis is time in seconds, I need to label that time in seconds, just like you do in science. And here's the big one. And this is actually like, no, seriously, this is like the big one. Label the scale for each axis, okay? Now, 
your graph literally means nothing if there is no scale, okay? Because every single linear function looks like a line and you can't tell what line it specifically is unless there is a scale attached. Now I am not saying that your x-axis and your y-axis have to count the same. You do whatever you need. So if your x-axis is going to have a tick mark count as 1 and your y-axis is going to have a tick mark count at like 5 or 10s, that's fine as long as 1, you are consistent along an axis and 2, that scale is labeled. And here's how big this is. If on the test or quiz I ask you to make a high quality graph and you do not label the scale, it is no credit for the graph. Okay, I don't care how beautiful it is because your graph literally means nothing without a scale. And it's weird that I made it the very bottom criteria, but dude, seriously, most important one. You need a scale. Every line looks exactly the same unless there's a scale on it, all right? Now, remember, these are posted in the classroom, so during a test or quiz, if you want to make sure you're graphing right, you can just like turn your head and look at the criteria that are posted on the wall. Now let's do an example. And we're going to do an example of something with an exponent just because calculating these values is sometimes problematic for people who are just starting algebra. So the equation I want to graph is y equals 3 times 2 raised to the x power for the x values that start at negative 3 and go to 3. Now, I am not going to pick every single x value that ranges from negative 3 to 3 because there are infinitely many of them. I am just going to choose the integers. And this thing here is called a process table. And a process table is a table where the middle column shows your work. So when I substitute in negative 3 for x, I'm going to do this calculation. 3 times 2 raised to the negative 3 power. And then I can just go ahead and fill in all the work that I am going to be doing. Now, I have a graphing calculator, which makes life easier. But if you don't have a graphing calculator, I am going to show you why we did the sequences unit first. Okay, so starting off, I'm going to start off at 0. All right. So 2 to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3, okay? And if I look at this next one, 3 times 2 is 6, and then 3 times 4 is 12, and then 3 times 8 is 24. And if I look at the pattern in these numbers, I am multiplying by 2 every single time right? And so if this pattern is going to hold, it has to be able to hold in reverse going the other direction. So if it was multiplied by 2 going down, that means it has to be divided by 2 going the other direction. And 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. And I'm changing to decimal points because it makes it easier to graph. Uh, and then I go shrink shrink backwards, divide by 2. 1.5 divided by 2 is the same as 0 0.75, and I scooch back up that way, and if I divide 0 0.75 by 2, I get 0 0.375. All right, so now I have all the data points I need to graph, negative 3 to 3, and then all of my corresponding y values. And so before I actually graph for real, because I only have one little grid and I'm using marker and I want to make sure I do this well, um, I'm going to do a quick sketch. My x values are going to range from negative 3 to 3. And whenever I ask you to sketch, it doesn't need to have all of the details. It just needs to be a picture of the general shape. Now, I notice that if I think about this function, if I keep dividing by 2, there is a lower limit on my y values. I am never, ever, ever going to have a y value that's 0. It's going to get really, really close to 0, though. So I actually don't need this bottom quadrant. I just need to have the quadrants going up that way. And so I know my scale has to go up to like 24 and down to zero. And so if I think about where the points are going to be, they're going to be something like that. Okay. And that's without graphing by hand on a real graphing. That's just looking at a sketch. So my graph should look something like this when I finish it. And remember, you want to look at your Y scale by looking at your lowest Y value and your highest Y value. In this case, they are on either ends of the table. Sometimes that lowest value or that highest value is actually hidden somewhere in the middle of the table, depending on the kind of data you have. All right, so now let's get to graphing. Now, as I said, you don't need an entire piece of graph paper. You can settle with a little bitty piece of graph paper like I have here. So I know that my x scale has to go from negative 3 to 3, and I don't need the bottom half of the graph at all. 
So I'm going to actually make my x-axis go down here. I'm not going to put the origin in the center because if I put the origin in the center, then I'm basically wasting half of my piece of grid, right? Because I don't need anything down here. Now my x-axis goes from negative 3 to 3, so I do need to find uh, about the center to draw my y-axis. So label x and label y. So just get in the habit of when you draw your axes in, put the arrows and put the x and y on there. And now let's label the scale. So my x-axis needs to go from 3 to negative 3. And I can squish it in there and make it count by 1s. But then I'm going to waste like half of the grid again. So I'm going to have my x scale be every 2 count as 1. right? And I'm going to label my scale. And another benefit of, of spacing out like this is I can actually label all the numbers. Now you don't have to label all the numbers. You can just label enough to, to see what the actual scale is. And sometimes you'll see me get really lazy and I'll just like label one number on each axis. Okay, so that's good. Now I need to go from 0 to 27. So I need to figure out how many lines I have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And if I have them count by 2s, then it only goes up to 24. So I'm going to have to count every line going up by 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27. Okay, and once again, you don't need to label every single one of these numbers. I just did to make sure I could count correctly. You can also just label every other line or every third line or every fourth line. Um, because sometimes if you label every line, you can actually lose your graph because the numbers get all cluttered. And so had I not used pen, okay, this is why you use pencil. Had I not used pen, I could have maybe erased every other line, but I decided to do this in pen, so I can't erase those lines now. So my graph is going to look a little cluttered on the y-axis. So now I'm going to give you this warning. If you didn't know about this, kids, if you're going to use a lighter color, use the lighter color first, or else you're going to mess your markers up. So now I'm actually going to graph my graph. This is just my axes and scale. I'm going to actually graph in black pen. So I'm going to start with the 0 being at 3, and then 1 was at 6, and then 2 was at 12, and then 3 was way up here at 24. Negative 1 was at 1 and a half, which is right there-ish, and then negative 2 was at 3 quarters, which is about there-ish. And when you start to graph things like this, and you know this goes to 3, what I'm really doing here is I'm approximating the values, which is perfectly fine. Uh, and then we go from negative 3 is 0 0.375. That's going to be right above the axis, okay? Because I just want to know the shape of this graph. You can't do the squiggle line thing they do in science that allows you to jump. So if you wanted to, like, put those and have the scale be, you know, tiny and then do a squiggle line and change the scale, that kind of defeats the purpose. When we're in algebra and we're looking at these equations, what we want to do is see the shape of the graph. And if you do that squiggle line thing, or if you change your scale, you lose the shape, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now, if I look at this, these do not line up in a straight line segment, right? It's not a straight line. And that means I have to sketch in a curve. Do not, do not just start drawing straight lines in between those, because that's mathematically inaccurate. What you're saying is that these points in here will line up on that line, and that's not true. They actually curve. So you got to curve the graph. And this is actually the hardest part for me. Um, those of you who are artistically inclined will be able to do this much better than I can. Just take your time and use pencil. Oh my gosh, use pencil. You can really mess up if you use pen. And I always extend it out to follow the curve. Don't extend too far, though, because sometimes you can get the wrong shape. And don't forget your arrowheads, right? So you have to put your little arrows on either side. And this is a graph, high quality graph, because I think I have all the criteria. Graph paper, labels, arrows, curve, yeah. All right, so this is an example of a high quality graph and the equation was, and you can write this on the graph if you want to, y equals three times two to the x power.